Okay, now we're going to talk about some other things that uh, need to be tracked. And what I've done on the uh, master document list, let's see, you can't see my cursor, but if you look at the bottom row, you'll see that I've added the two tables that we created, one for the interested parties, and you scroll back up here. I've also added QMS-02 for the master document list. So now these two tables, I created a column, QMS tracking. It, it, you can't see the tracking because I shrunk the column down, but I've got a Y in there for yes, meaning that these are all tables that I'm creating for things that have to be tracked. Now, another table that I'm going to create We're going to name this table um, part numbers or mass. I wouldn't call it master uh, because then you get confused because then a lot of things become master. But we're going to call it uh, our part numbers table. Table name, part numbers. And the reason I start out with a table like this is because a lot of things that you do relate to a part number. So you have to keep track of things like deviations, um, rejections, corrective action, all these things that you can relate to a part number. We're gonna tie that in and create a data model uh, with a relationship to that part number. So we're gonna be creating multiple tables and you're gonna see how everything works together. But part numbers is going to be one that uh, we keep track of because you have to keep track of the blueprint dates, the blueprint revision levels. Um, this, this table can create your master blueprint log. We're also going to keep track of engineering standards and they relate to part numbers. So not every, like say for instance, not every part gets e-coded, top coded and you don't have to keep track. If it's not on there, you don't have to keep track of it for that particular part number. But if that standard should change, which recently the Volvo paint standard changed, I just saw it earlier in the month, and this is August 2023, it doesn't happen that often, but it did change. So anything that is impacted with that revision level, you need to revisit, and it needs to be uh, reviewed to make sure that it meets the requirements for the new revision level based on the paint engineering standard. So these are all things that have to be kept track of, and this is how we're going to keep track of things. We're going to be able to look at our master document list and filter out by this column, QMS, what should be tracked. So we know the master document list. We know interested parties. We have to keep track of them. And now we're gonna keep track of part numbers and things that we can associate with the part numbers. So you want a master list of all the parts that you produce. As we build this out, you're gonna be able to associate the process flow for each part number. So when you look up a part number, you'll be able to identify what happens to that part if it gets stamped, uh, painted, welded, drilled, tapped, whatever happens to that part, you'll, you'll know, and it'll all relate back to our main part numbers table. Now in this table, we're also going to keep track of revision levels, which is what I didn't do before in uh, the Paradox database that I created. I just changed everything. So this is also going to give us a history how we do this table, and that's uh, something that has become a little more strict is keeping revisions of things. So in our master document list, let me go back to here. Instead of changing these dates on the end here, now I'm going to say, okay, one document becomes obsolete and a revision level replaces that. And we can add a notes comment here 
to identify and document what that change was so that we can go back. These are things that were not incorporated into the original database, so we're going to fix all of these things. So in the master part number, I don't want a key field. Let's see, field name is not ID. We're just going to put part number. And it's not a number, it's just a short text. And I don't think it'll let me take the key off until I have more than one field. So you need to know the drawing number. Short text. And the reason that these aren't numbers is because some of our part numbers have letters in them. And if you put a number in here, it won't let you put the num won't let you put the letter in there. So we're going to keep track of the part number, drawing number, part name, and you can change these. Like I said, you can add to it. Uh, let's see. Blueprint date. Now this we do want date, just date. Uh, and revision level. Not everyone um, uses a date, so we're just going to put a short text. So it, it could be empty. Let's see. Part number, drawing number, part name, blueprint date, revision level. We want PPAP approval date. So this will help us keep track of when parts are approved. Um, let's see. Oh, well, let's just call it that for now. Let me see if I can get rid of this key. I do not want uh, required. Yes, allow zero length. Uh, that doesn't matter. No duplicates. We're gonna. Uh oh, I guess I should read the error. No. Removing or changing the index in this field will require removal of the primary key. If you want to delete the primary key, select that field and click the primary key button. Well, I did that. There we go. Ah. Okay. So now we're going to save this and this is going to become the third table that has to be tracked. Now we're going to associate whatever we can with this part number to make our life easier. So let's continue on with more things so that a quality manager or um, associate for the quality manager has to keep track of. Some of this stuff may be tracked by other people depending on how big your company is. So let's continue on.